Welcome once again right now right Ephesians chapter 1 verses 1 through 14. Predestination, the act of God's grace. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, through the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A few definitions here. The word Christ here means Messiah. Also note the word saints here. Paul writes to the saints. He doesn't write to the world. The saints at Ephesus. The saints are those who really believe and really are born again. A new creation in Christ. The old sinful self is dead. They are crucified with Christ. They no longer live, but Christ lives through them in newness of life. Paul doesn't write to the sinners saved by grace. He writes to the saints. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy. Mm, he chose us that we would be holy and without defect before him in love, having predestined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his desire, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he freely gave us favor in the beloved, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in him, to an administration of the fullness of the times, to sum up all things in Christ, the things in the heavens and the things on the earth in him. Wow, what a sentence that was. Let's take it one bite at a time. Once again, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. The spiritual blessings that Paul is talking about here are the heavenly treasures that Jesus talked about. The heavenly riches. So we are blessed with spiritual treasures, heavenly riches in Christ. Again, most people are not in Christ. In order to be in Christ, first of all, you must come to the place of identifying with the crucifixion of Christ, as Paul did in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, saying, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, in this human body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So you have died with Jesus on the cross. You are crucified with Jesus and you rose with him when he rose from the dead, becoming a new creation in Christ. All of the old is gone. All of the new has come. Then and only then a person can say that they are in Christ. Even as he chose us in him, again, there's that word, in him, before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and without defect. Paul is not talking about a hypocritical mask here that you put on, that somehow that you're clothed with the righteousness of Christ, but underneath the real you is sinful. No, he's talking about death to the old man. He's talking about being crucified with Christ and becoming a brand new creation. Now, does that mean you're perfect in the eyes of men? Obviously not. You're going to make mistakes according to the human perception of mistakes. You might trip. You might fall when you walk. Is that a perfect walk? Is that without defect? No. You might trip. Is that a sin? No. When you're writing a letter, when you're writing an email, when you're writing a message, you might make a spelling mistake. You might make grammatical errors. Is that perfect? No. Is that a defect according to the eyes of men? Yes, but is that a sin according to God? No. So there's a big difference between being sinless in the eyes of men, being perfect in the eyes of men, and being sinless in the eyes of God. 
Being sinless in the eyes of God means that you don't break any of his commands. You don't violate his law. Being sinless or perfect in the eyes of human beings usually means that you are being held to a hypocritical standard, a double standard that they have, and they hold you to unreasonable expectations. And if you don't meet any of their expectations, if you're not perfect according to their own laws, then they say that you're not perfect and you're a sinner. But you can be a sinner in their sight and sinless in God's sight. Remember, all of the prophets, all of the apostles were sinners in the eyes of men, but they weren't sinners in the eyes of God. In fact, that's why they all got killed for the most part, having predestined us for adoption as children. So before you are born again, truly born again, I'm talking about when you can actually say the old is gone and the new has come. I become a new creation in Christ. I am holy without defect now. I am a child of God now. So before that happened, before the born again experience, you weren't really a child of God. He adopted you, having predestined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his desire, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Okay, here we go. Grace and predestination is linked together. And this is what Paul said in Romans chapter 9 as well, that the grace of God were saved by grace because by the grace of God, God predestined you to be a holy saint. Remember, all of the epistles, all of the letters of Paul were written to the saints. They weren't written to sinners, sinners saved by grace. They were written to saints. And so as Paul explained in Romans chapter 9, just as Jacob was chosen and Esau was hated in the womb before they did anything right or wrong, in the same way, by God's grace, he chooses his people. And in that way, it's by his grace we are saved. By his grace, he chooses you to be saved, to be a saint, to live holy, to live without defect, to become a new creation, to say with Paul, I am crucified with Christ and Jesus himself lives through me. Grace and predestination are linked inseparably by which he freely gave us favor in the beloved, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, making known to us the mystery. Yes, God makes known to us the mystery of God. God is no more mysterious when you know him, when you receive the spirit of God, when you receive his spirit, he shows you all things. As it says in the book of Romans, eye is not seen, ear is not heard, mind has not conceived what God has prepared for those who love him, but he has revealed it to us by his spirit, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in him to the administration of the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, the things in the heavens and the things on earth in him. This word administration in some other translations is the word dispensation. The word dispensation is more accurately translated administration here. And like I said in the previous session, you know, Christians take these little tiny tidbits, these little tiny, you know, sound bites like, you know, law of Christ or dispensation and throne of Christ. And they build a whole theology on it. And it's so shallow because they don't even look up the word dispensation to see what it really says in the original manuscripts. They just take this ancient word that was translated like 400 years ago by the King James translators. And nowadays it doesn't even mean the same thing thing. They take this word dispensation. They say, well, we had the dispensation of Adam, you know, between Adam and Moses. Then there was the dispensation of the law between Moses and, and Christ. Now it's the dispensation of the church. And they say stuff like, well, we had the dispensation of the law, you know, between Moses and Christ. And now we have the dispensation of the church. If you really look at the scriptures, if you really study the scriptures, you will find out that by grace, it was the grace of God that God gave Moses the law. It was by his grace. 
God loved his people so much that he told them how to live, how to live holy. He told them and he showed them his ways, his rules, his precepts, how to live holy and be blessed. Likewise, if you read the scriptures, Acts chapter 7 is very clear. The church existed with Moses as well in the wilderness. Certainly there are different covenants that have been instituted at different times, but the covenant is not the law. And God's grace was in existence from the beginning of the world until now. Never changed. I am the Lord. I change not. Neither does his law. Neither does his grace. And yes, he does make different covenants with different people. That's a totally different subject. A covenant is not a law, even though the law is in the covenant. To sum up all things in Christ, the things in the heavens and the things on the earth in him. We were also assigned an inheritance in him, having been foreordained according to the purpose of him who does all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we should be to the praise of his glory. Do you live in such a way that you will bring praise to God? Is your lifestyle conducive to the praise of his glory? To the end that we should be to the praise of his glory, we who had hoped in Christ. In him you also, having heard the word of truth, the good news, or the gospel of your salvation, in whom, having also believed, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is a pledge of our inheritance to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. The Spirit of God is a deposit in you from heaven. When you receive the Spirit of God, then you receive a deposit. It's like God's deposit in you. Okay, here's the deposit. Later you'll get everything. And let me assure you, the fact of the matter is the Spirit of God is God himself, the most powerful person in the universe. And when the most powerful person in the universe, the creator of all the universe, comes and lives in you, you know it. You know it. There's no question about it. You are changed. You are shocked by his presence. And you will grow from faith to faith, from glory to glory as you seek him. Because if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.